Once upon a time, a girl named Felicity and a boy named Peter bought an abandoned 1830s farmhouse in New York with the intention of loving it and cherishing it and bringing it back to life. And actually, one of my biggest dreams for this property is to build a permaculture food forest on it. And I have been able to take a step forward towards that dream today and had a consultation with a local permaculture food forest expert. So I'm really excited to share with you what we talked about because it is super cool. So let's get started. So since we were here last and filmed where the septic system is going to go, we've had a permaculture consultation with a lovely gentleman named Sean from Edible Acres, who is also on YouTube, and I'll link to his channel in the description below, which was incredibly helpful, not only because he's local to the area and told us what will grow here, but he also gave us some great ideas that we hadn't thought about before. And one of them, if you have watched a couple of the previous videos, you'll know that I was bemoaning the fact that this area here is going to be our septic leach field. It's about 150 square feet. It's going to be about 30 feet wide by about 50 feet long and you don't want to grow anything on your leach field that has roots that are going to come down and penetrate the leach lines because that destroys your leach field and so i was thinking that we wouldn't be able to use this as anything other than perhaps a decorative forest meadow which we might still do however sean pointed out quite correctly that if we want to build up we could build raised beds on top of this area because that would add an additional three or four feet of soil above ground and the leach lines are buried about 10 feet down anyway so it's not like they're right underneath the soil and we still can't grow trees or shrubs anything with long roots but most of the things that we would grow in an annual garden bed the roots are not going to be even four feet deep right let alone you know six eight twelve feet deep so the question would become if we're going to keep this rather foresty which is the idea at the moment now that could change but it's it's quite it's very shaded and so the question is you know what kind of raised bed would we put here and what would we grow in it so that's nothing we need to decide right now but it's very exciting to have that possibility as opposed to just thinking it might be a wildflower bed and we might end up still doing a wildflower bed when we actually sit down to plan out the whole of the property we might just decide that we don't need raised beds here and that they would be very good for you know just having a a woodland glade of a sort so that's very exciting. And then the other thing we've been talking about, which I believe I mentioned, um, if you watch the video laying out the septic system, right here at the end of the driveway is where the sand trap is going to go. And we need the sand trap because the soil is very clay, has a lot of clay in it, which does not drain water very well. So we basically need to make a hole in the ground, fill it with sand, and then put the sand trap here to drain out a lot of the stuff from the septic system. Also means we can't build anything on top of it that would penetrate those drainage pipes. So we've talked about putting uh, firewood racks here. I had originally envisioned them running this way because that's the way the driveway runs. But after talking to Sean, who also does some solar panel work on his place, again, he's a 20 minute drive from here. He said that our best option would be for solar panels in the future would be to orient any building that we're going to put them on south, which is that way, and maybe tilted slightly east to catch some of the them of the sun as it rolls around so instead I'm, of having things going this way which doesn't really make sense now that I think about it anyway because you'd be coming off the driveway with your load of wood from wherever and you'd want to be able to get into the rows I'm thinking we have the sheds go this way over the sand trap and that way they're oriented appropriately for future solar which we definitely want to do and then also there's pathways right at the edge of the driveway so you can just sort of align your trailer with the correct pathway and bring them in without having to do any extra work. So I'm quite pleased about both of those developments. They were not things that I had thought of on my own and they made me feel a lot better about being able to use the space that's dedicated to the septic system for other services that we want to put on the property. The other thing that was really rewarding when we were talking to Sean about doing permaculture and a food forest on this property is that he confirmed what we had already been thinking, which is that the north of the property, which is the part that butts up against the stream, and the west part of the property was the part that would most likely be foresty, right? Like actual foresty, the way it is now. And then this area here, right outside the back of the house, might be a little more annual garden. There might be some herbs and things back here. And then obviously here on the south side, this is where this, the sand trap is. And so this is where like the woodsheds are gonna go and things like that. And then we're here on the southern property line. And he gave us some great ideas about building a living, planting a living wall here, which is great along with planting a living wall on the east side. What we're still trying to figure out and isn't something we need to figure out right now, but we're trying to figure out where a garage would go. It would be ideal in some ways to have the garage right there because then we'd be close to the house 
However, that's also a fairly levelish part of ground and closer to the septic tank and the well. So it might be kind of cool to put a cute little cottagey thing there and build a garage here and maybe have, you know, a workroom or two that goes up the hill over there. Because while this is a really cute shady grove, it's also right next to the road and has all the road noise coming in, just like our house has all the road noise coming in. So it was very encouraging when we were talking to Sean to hear most of the things that we had been thinking about he brought up first without ever like me having to describe specifically what it was like he was the one who suggested a berm in the front and said oh we've already been talking about that he was the one who suggested the woods in the north and west portions of the property which is what we had already been thinking he uh, suggested a number of other things that we had already had in mind and then a couple things that we hadn't including building raised beds on the leach field and orienting our building efforts towards optimal solar locations in future so it was a really wonderful hour to spend talking with sean and if you guys are interested he does do consulting uh, permaculture consulting and his channel he's building a food forest not that far from us so if you're curious about any of his services or what he's doing on his property i will put again his link in the description below he's well worth checking out there is a circle here that we're thinking was a flower bed Let's zoom out a little bit so you can see it there in its entirety which would make sense because we're about five feet from that piece of cement slab and I know some of you were asking if there was any chance that there's a sidewalk that goes out through here we don't think there is now of course there's always a chance let me back up there's always a chance that there's going to be a sidewalk out here but Peter thinks that the initial uh, uh, estimate that when they came to the house because they weren't living here full time when they came to the house they probably did come in and use this as a driveway because it was the most convenient to the house. And at some point they just put this one slab in here to make their lives easier. And so we think it's just the one slab, but in a direct line with it is this flower bed here. And there's a little bit, if you guys can tell, there's a little bit of edging also around the lamp, which as far as we can tell is currently non-functional. So at some point somebody spent some time spiffing up basically this line from here from the corner of the porch out at least to here and that's kind of where it ends as far as we can tell there doesn't seem to be any other further rockscaping at least up here now the other thing that peter and i were talking about today is putting a berm in here so that we're planning to put a french drain up here because we, the water coming off the road we'd rather direct it than let it just sort of wander its way uh, into the house so we're going to put a French drain up here, but the question was, should we put a berm on the house side of the French drain, both to help us a second line of defense, should the French drain become overwhelmed, and also because having earth between us and the road would help reduce a lot of the noise that you guys are currently hearing. And so after some discussion with Peter, we are going to ask Jeff, who's our earthworks guy, how such a berm might be constructed, but it's quite high. Most of the sound comes from where the road and the wheels touch, right? So ideally you'd want a berm to inter interrupt that sound and absorb it. But where I'm standing, there's maybe a three foot rise from the road to where I'm standing. But when you get down here, and Peter was standing down there earlier when we were talking, it is a four, four and a half foot rise. It's quite a substantial berm at that point. One might call it an embankment even. So I'm not sure A, if that's what we want to do visually for the house and B, it's probably not something we can afford to bring in that much earth to do this year. So we are still gonna ask Jeff how such a berm would be constructed so we understand what it would mean to put that in. But I don't think at this point, at least for the first winter, that we're going to put it in here um, just because we don't have the money to do so. We are, however, planning to turn this front yard just into something beautiful and ornamental. Um, we're not gonna grow any food up here. It's too close to the road exhaust and I also don't wanna grow anything that's gonna entice critters to cross the road because I really don't want roadkill in front of my house. Um, we've talked about putting a line of lilacs in. Um, we've talked about maybe putting willow in. Uh, Sean, the permaculturist, suggested uh, miscanthus. Enormous, I think, is the approximate scientific name. It's a tall grass that grows 10 to 12 feet tall in a single season and doesn't spread. Uh, or maybe a willow hedge, something like that. So we are definitely going to plant this in here so that it's pleasing from the windows. But this is not going to be a human food producing part of the food forest plan. So after all the exciting stuff at the house today, the last thing we needed to do was check the mailbox. And this doesn't sound like a big deal, 
we haven't gotten mail in a month. And after 45 minutes on hold, Peter finally got a hold of someone at the post office call center because you can't call individual post office. You can only call the main call center. And they told him that we had to bring all these paperwork to prove that we had owned the house because the house had been vacant for a number of years. So two days before this video, we went down to the Lodi post office because they're only open from 8.30 to 12.30 with all of our paperwork in hand. And they just had us fill out a form that basically reestablished rural service. So this is the first time checking the mailbox to see if it worked. So the big question is, do we have mail? Because we went down to the post office on Wednesday and told them the house was no longer vacant. That's the first time we've been back. So, there's something in the mailbox. Yay! We do in fact have mail and it's my favorite archeology span magazine and one of my checks from one of my clients. Woo! We have mail. Thank you so much for being here. I love talking about permaculture and food forests. It is my favorite part of this property. It's the part that I'm looking to the most. And I am deeply grateful that I got to share it with you and with Sean. And I'm really looking forward to sharing the next step of the journey with you, which should be updates on the roof. So look for that video in a few days. Bye for now.